So you want to program your new Castle ESC, but you don't want to buy Castle Link? Keep watching, because I'm going to show you how to program with your transmitter in about five minutes. So right here I have my Sidewinder SCT installed on my 116th e Revo, but it doesn't matter which castle system it is or which vehicle it's installed in. So what you're going to need for this is the ESC connected to the motor and the receiver, and which the receiver has to be bound to the transmitter, obviously. And you're also going to need this little programming card or the driver's ed guide. Before we even try to program it in the first place, we want to make sure that we have all of our settings selected in this book. So that's what we're going to focus on right now. So in the first half of this book, we're just going to be explained with a quick start guide and a bunch of other stuff, how to wire it. But if we go to the halfway point, we're going to be introduced with all of these different settings. And if we keep on flipping through, it's just going to show you all the different settings and which options they supply. So what I'm going to do for you to help you understand is I'm going to explain which of these settings does and which option is going to have uh, the best effect or like, you know, just kind of how changing the setting is going to change its performance. Here we go. I worded it correctly. So for brake reverse type, I would select option one with reverse, which is default. But we also have without reverse, which means that it's just disabled and only meant for braking and there's crawler reverse. There's also brake amount, which is the amount of power for the braking that it's going to deliver to the motor. Over here we have reverse amount, so how much speed we're going to get out of the reverse function. Punch traction control, which is personally, I think, one of the most important options. Setting this option to high is going to make it accelerate slowly. As it says here, very limited acceleration. So that means you're going to have less wear on your tires, but it also means it's not going to be as punchy and you're not going to be able to do backflips or wheelies like you might want to. So if we flip on the other side, we see we have medium, low, lowest, and disabled settings. So the lowest setting would mean that it's able to do a backflip, but it's still going to offer a little bit of ease on the motor so it's not going to strain it too much or the slipper clutch and things like that but if you have it on disabled mode it means it's only limited by the battery ability so if, if you slam the throttle it is just going to deliver as much power to the motor as it possibly can I do not recommend that setting at the most I would put it to lowest if you want to do some wheelies and flips and stuff like that. So over here on drag brake that means if you let go of the throttle and it's going to be coasting along the road if you have the drag brake enabled it's going to brake it just a little bit which is 10% or you could bring it all the way up to 40% which would I don't know, it'd just be really inconvenient, so most of the time I would have the drag brake off and do your own manual braking. The dead band is related to the transmitter. So if we have this option 1 set to large, it means that it's going to have a little bit more wee leeway on the throttle before it actually activates. If we have it to the smallest setting, that means if we just touch the throttle a tiny bit, it's going to make it brake or accelerate if that makes sense. So if if I add it to setting 1, I mean option 1, and I pulled about this much, it wouldn't have any effect until I reached it to about here. But if I had it to the first option, if I touch it just at all, it's going to have an effect on the vehicle. Cutoff voltage. This is relating to if you want to use NIM or LiPo batteries. Option 1 is designed for NIM batteries, and option 2 is designed for LiPo batteries. I would not use any of these other voltage settings that you can apply just because well auto LiPo automatically detects the amount of cells that it's taking in. Motor timing. So it's going to combine all of these settings together and either make it really efficient or really hard on the motor and electronics. So if I had it set to option one lowest, it's going to send a little bit less power to the motor and it's going to make your driving a little bit more efficient which means you get increased run times and you also have re reduced temperatures and it's also going to be a little bit easier on your battery if you want to have it so that it's always just going to be a beast of a machine you have it set, set to the highest setting but generally I would have it set to normal which is a mix of in between now motor type this one's pretty obvious to the eye and I believe those are all the settings in the book. 
So as you're going through, reading through the book, you can circle which setting you want for each thing. So if I'm starting here, I'm going to select with reverse, so I'm just going to circle option one, and then we're going to go through all the book. So at the end of the book, it gives a highlight of all the different options. So I just circled each option that I want. Now, what I'm going to do is grab an extra piece of paper I have laying around, and I'm going to copy this information down, or these options, I'm going to copy them down on a different piece of paper in a code format. So that's going to make it a little bit easier for when we're actually in the programming section. So in total, we have nine different settings. So I'm just going to note those down real quickly. Alright, so now I have all of the settings down. Now I'm going to list down the options. So if I had option 1 for setting 1 selected, I'm going to write down next to setting 1, just the number 1. That's how simple it is. Then next for break amount, I'm going to set it to option 3, so I'm going to write down 3. And so on and so forth. Alright, so now I have my code format written down, just very simple numbers. Now we're going to teach you how to get into programming mode. Programming mode. And then do the programming. So you might be wondering how we program this with our transmitter. Well, we're actually going to be using the throttle to give it either a yes or a no to its question or its beeps. So if I were on the first setting, which is what it's at when you get into programming mode, it's going to give you one beep and then another beep following after that, like one second later. Then it has a three second pause and repeats itself. So, if I were to give it an answer of no, which is also reverse, if I were to hold that down for a second, it would say that I don't like this specific option and I want to move on to the next one. So it's going to move on to one, two. It's going to have one beep, one second pause, and then two beeps following that, and it will repeat itself. If I want one, three, which I don't, but I'm just saying this figuratively, I would give it yes. So I would hold down the throttle for about a second, and then what that's going to do is it's going to lock in that option for that setting. So now, after that point, I would have 1, 3, and it's going to move on to setting 2, option 1. Now, I want to move on to setting 2, option 3, actually. So what I'm going to do is give it 1, no. It's going to move on to 2, 2. I'm going to give it another no. Moves on to 2, 3. I want that option, so I give it yes. And it's going to continue moving on until the end. So after the point of 9, 1, when it is done programming, it is going to in, it's going to give its final little tones or its song and then after that point it's actually in driving condition so once you're out of programming mode make sure not to slam the throttle because the vehicle will be active and it will fly off your desk so uh, that's all you need to know and if you ever screw up any of your options during this process all you need to do is unplug the vehicle and plug it back in now that we know how to give it its yes and no responses, I'm going to show you how to, pro how to get into programming mode and do the whole process. So the trick to getting into programming mode is holding the throttle when you turn on your vehicle. So let's say I do not have a switch, which I do not for this ESC, and I plug it in. If I'm holding down full throttle, it's going to anticipate that I want to go into programming mode. If you have your own switch still installed in it, then when you flick the switch, you need to be holding full throttle at the same time. So let's just take a look at what this is going to be like. So obviously first turn on your transmitter, don't be a doofus, and then I'm going to plug in the ESC. Still holding full throttle, it needs to go through its little musical tones. Alright, so now it's repeating itself and also flashing yellow on the ESC, which means I can let go. So now it's giving us the beeps indicating that it's on setting 1, option 1. 
Now I want that, so I'm going to hold down full throttle. Now it's on option two. I mean, setting two, option one. I don't want that, so I'm going to hold down reverse. Still don't want that. Reverse. And I want that option, so I'm going to hold down full throttle. Yes. Now because I've done this several times, I'm just going to do go through the settings super quickly. Alright, so there it just did it la its last musical tone, which means that it is out of programming mode. And I can move this during, or if I really wanted to, I could give it some throttle. But after this point, it is programmed and it is saved in the system. Now the next time you unplug your battery, the settings are still going to be saved on there. So that's how you program any of your castle systems. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like and uh, vote up in my poll in the top right to whether or not this helped you or if you ask for more help. Anyway, if you do need more help, please ask me in the comments down below. I'm sure to answer you within about a day. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.